Amadi, who I know work for a uh, litigation founder in China, and also do some research in the litigation uh, in the uh, Legal Capital Research Institute. So basically, I'm uh, both a, a a practitioner in the funding industry and also a researcher. And my topic is about uh, uh, what is your next battlefield, but. Actually, I don't only mean China in this topic. I would just say uh, to for for the founders or other practitioners, we should focus on more emerging market. And one is China, which I will introduce about the market there. And I will divide those into like four parts. But first, let let's see about some histories. I know Chinese people, they want to talk about more of their histories. We have 5,000 years of history. Actually, it's not that long, but when we see about founding, uh, probably we can only see the ground zero in the Qing Dynasty from uh, probably 16,000 to 90. And at that time, there's a law of the Qing Dynasty, which one regulation says, some lawyers, but that time it doesn't use the wording lawyers in Chinese, they use the wording song shi, which probably from my perspective doesn't mean different lawyers, but someone who can, some agencies, probably recovery agencies, that uh, exaggerate the claims to earn a better income from both parties. This is very, uh, very, this is very unique that in ancient China, someone, some recovery agent, could help both parties. One party, the, the plaintiff, and then probably the defendant. And maybe sometimes they will exaggerate the claim, say maybe one, 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 one is that it's just, uh, maybe it's just a dispute between a real estate at that time. So uh, normally they would say, okay, this is just a dispute, but this recovery agent, the Song Shi, will exaggerate that to several disputes. And for the both party to hire him to solve the dispute. So he get a better income. Then the public policy and also the law uh, uh, forbidden that as a matter of uh, uh, not to, to, to exaggerate the claims and or not to cause any instability of the society. But we do not know whether it's a Chinese historical tradition of uh, stress of uh, maintenance of charity. It might be, it might not. Also, when we talk about contingent fees, it's not like Australia. In China, when the new uh, lawyer system comes through the 1990s, and then in 2004, it formally gives the definition of contingency fee, which, which in Chinese is also called the risk representation uh, of such kind of pattern, and also, it defines that in 2004 as a code of conduct by the All Lawyers, All China Lawyers Association, more like the, 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 the Law Society in China. And also in 2006, in a, in a, in a regulation uh, published by the uh, NDRC, the National Development and uh, uh, Reform Council, which uh, at that time, or in previous times, regulate about the price of uh, the products and also the price for services and give some standard for that that NDRC and also the Ministry of Justice, uh, Ministry of Commerce, uh, Ministry of Justice at that time give such kind of uh, uh, regulatories on the, on the lawyer's fee and some of them are de dealing with contingency fee. So we see uh, there are some cases that can be found in uh, by the contingency, but a case that relate to marriage and inheritance, it cannot. And something about social insurance, and uh, also something about uh, uh, supporting parents or children, other sorts of uh, like family related cases, that cannot be based on uh, 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 contingency fee. And also the case, the, the criminal cases, and some administrative cases that cannot be uh, dealt with contingency fee. So when we talk about the uh, litigation finance and also another notion called the third party funding, that in recent years there are some definitions 
One is from the Syntax Hong Kong, the China International Economic Trade and Arbitration Commission, which is the, one of the most famous arbitration, commission, arbitration institutions in China. The Syntax branch uh, just gave a kind of uh, uh, guideline for the uh, third party funding as uh, the Hong Kong legislation on third party funding goes. It clearly says what is a third party funding here. And also, CTEC, the headquarter of CTEC, in 2017, itself just uh, uh, published a international investment arbitration rules. And it also gave some disputes, uh, gave some definition on the, uh, on the definition of third party funding. And also in China, I think that is also the reason why in other jurisdictions that parties choose third party funding. Uh, some, so some do that for risk shifting. Some of them, they would like to share the benefits, not just to share that, but as I understand, uh, use a more confident pattern or tools to pursue their disputes. And also some lack of sufficient litigation fund. Some of them are cash flow issues, some are not, are not, they do not have money at all. So basically that's two reasons, and also that works for Chinese parties. Um, we have those kind of uh, funding patterns in China, uh, recently no in-course investment, and also probably litigation arbitration loan. Those loans happen all the time uh, for some individuals or for some companies. To, loan, to, to make loans, to lend some money to another entity and to help them to uh, pursue their disputes. And after that, there's a com interest come and, and also the crowdfunding. Some lawyers in China before uh, the notion of uh, litigation finance or third party funding ever emerges in China, uh, they do not only continue the arrangement, but they also do some crowdfunding. Mainly if uh, a law firm, some lawyers in a law firm, uh, one lawyer have a very good case, one partner have a very good case, other partners would come together and say, okay, whether this case is uh, worth invest, invest, to invest, if that's so, they would make a crowdfunding and to share the risk and also outcome of the case that the partner would, uh, would itself to, uh, willing to represent and also legal insurance, mainly on the, uh, the, the insurance for freezing assets, and also some insolvency finance provided by some uh, capital management companies. And I think one thing is about legality. Uh, as I mentioned previous, that in the United States are forbidden, but in modern China, in a PRC regime, that if under PRC law, there are several things. First is that there's no law uh, because China do not have a uh, traditional maintenance and charity. It has no law uh, regulating or even prohibiting that. And there's a law that allows for uh, contingency fees. There's a law allows for the treat of claims, of treat of debts, and also uh, under the Chinese principle of private law, that if there's no, uh, no obvious law prohibiting that certain kind of uh, conduct, then it is legitimate. So when, when come with those three issues, that we can see that it is uh, legitimate in China, but there also need to be regulated because there is no clear law saying that it's allowed, but we say, okay, because there's no law prohibiting that on some circumstances that is allowed. And also, uh, many, many institutions, including our firms, has contributed something to the legality from the year 2013, that's the CTEC Hong Kong Arbitration Center. They began the drafting of their guidelines. On 2016, also, uh, the CTEC Hong Kong released the first version, draft version, of the guideline. And then the Shenzhen Court of uh, International Arbitration, uh, the SCIA, they uh, published uh, rules, not for arbitration, but for facilitating negotiations. 
It's more like the more than commercial mediation that also have a clause that a third party founder facilitating such proceedings. And also in 2017, in both uh, Hong Kong and also another China Arbitration Alliance uh, published a rule and also for us to submit a snapshot of the Chinese market to the ACA Queen Emmanuel, uh, sorry, ACA uh, uh, Queen Mary University of London and the, the task force for their consideration of the Chinese market. And also on 2018, we drafted two. One is the uh, kind of uh, regulations. Another is the kind of guidelines in arbitration. And also in this year, uh, Beijing Arbitration Commission it has its new international uh, international investment arbitration rules, and that also provide the uh, arbitration uh, arbitration rules in the investment arbitration rules, which includes third party funding. And also, want to talk about Hong Kong. Hong Kong 2006, uh, 2017, it passes the law of a new arbitration code, uh, uh, sorry, arbitration ordinance to allow third party funding. And with the uh, with with the effect coming effect of its code of co code of practice in uh, January uh, February this year, uh, the law take it to the effect, and in Hong Kong, that funding of arbitration proceedings or related court proceedings are allowed. And we have uh, yeah, what will be regulation for the uh, for the litigation finance in China? Legal sector, yes, probably, but through maybe arbitration rules from arbitration institution or some guidance from a relevant, whether it's a court or arbitration institution. But also, uh, another consideration is in the fin finance sector, because finance in China is uh, highly controlled, and on some part, that might be uh, an administrative regulations, mainly on the source of funding, how you make your fundraising. And what does that come from? What can that be used? Should that be a registration or should that be approval? Uh, that we uh, observe that this might be a future potential regulations source. And also for the conflict of interest, there might be two types of conflict of interest. One is probably uh, by a arbitrator and a law firm, a arbitrator or a partner of a law firm, uh, which deals with the independency and impartiality for the arbitration proceedings. And another is between, uh, uh, another is in a, in a founded party and also the founder. Because for example, if I make very clear that if there's a, let's say there's a, um, there's a class action in China against a public listed company for the, maybe the fraudulent uh, representation or foreign behavior, and that if that company also, the, the founder also founded some listed company which might face such issues and might give the conflict, conflict of interest at these certain circumstances. So that might be uh, self-regulation of the founders and probably re reasonable market rules or guidelines for them to avoid such kind of conflict of interest. And also, uh, there are regulations in China which says which avoids about which regulates about the uh, the arbitrator's independence and uh, impartiality. Um, uh, even under the founders founding regime or non under the founding regime, and also there are still some imperfection, which is there's a, no practical guide. There's a some clauses under the arbitration rules, there's the clauses under the Chinese arbitration law, but there is no such things, such, uh, such clear as the IBA guidelines of conflict of interest in arbitration, says on what circumstances this constitutes a conflict of interest, on what circumstances that doesn't constitute, or what should we treat a founder, would that be a party, or would that be a pricing party, or would that be another thing else? And also, there's no mandatory measure. So if you do not follow the confidential uh, conflict of interest rules, you do not make such kind of uh, uh, disclosure, 
and for another party to challenge the arbitrator, what kind of negative influence would that be? Would that be a moment of the arbitration award? Or would that be a punishment of the founders? There were no such kind of rules right now. And probably this is a example I just said, so I would just skip that. And about market, about Chinese market, we see that uh, in 2016, I think that is the starting time for the professional founders in China. And there are big founders, uh, DSU Capital, and also other uh, Bonging Capital, uh, Going Legal Capital uh, is in Beijing. Uh, Wean Legal Finance is in Shanghai. And WHC, Legal Education Finance, is also in Shanghai. And also, since the year 2017 and 2018, some small founders emerges in some central cities. And they specialize in certain type of cases. Some of them are good at security related cases. Some of them are good at construction related cases. And some of them are just a pricing provider, which means that uh, the back, it is backed by a law firm or some partners of a law firm to do that kind of business. And also, uh, we see some uh, market analysis. Politics is one thing that we should always consider whether it's approved, whether it's uh, uh, whether it's uh, promoted by the uh, policy, and also the society or the social concern, whether it could be a a, a tool to promote social justice or social uh, stability, or would that be in otherwise? So, and also when they see economy, whether it's a, a mark, whether it suits the market, whether it suits the needs of the market, and also technology. Because when right now in China, uh, there are too many disputes. Some of them are financial-based disputes, but the disputes is very small. It is only take like uh, uh, a very small amount. So uh, the, someone, some arbitration institutions, they just uh, uh, suggest to for those disputes to be solved by an online dispute resolution platform. Uh, Alibaba just recently uh, worked with the Hangzhou uh, court to uh, promote an uh, online court to solve the disputes be raising between uh, e-commerce and also the customer. So technology also surfaced in this area. So uh, for a founder, rather to evaluate the case based on, uh, on expertise, on professionality, on experiences, or also a uh, tool or a uh, technology, uh, high technology, high uh, database, or other software or uh, uh, artificial intelligence could also help with those kind of evaluation of cases uh, when facing too many cases at the same time. And also, I think this model is just like uh, the normal one with founders. So uh, when there's a quest for funding, there's a preliminary assessment, there's a decision making, there's a funding agreement, then after the, the both parties sign the funding agreement, there's a case management. But as far as I know that in China, because there is no also clear regulation on the case management, whether the party, whether a founder could uh, control or at least have some influence on the cases, this is not clear. So basically, I think most of the founders would uh, do something to, to, to at least influence the case to, for, the, for, the, uh, for the security of their, uh, the money they invest in. And also some evaluation standard, there uh, maybe what, what type of cases, most of the fund commercial cases. Also someone would like to fund some traffic uh, related cases, personal injuries, risks and also the internal uh, internal return rate and also other relevant issues and also in the final stage recovery of revenue about fundraising because Chinese is just a preliminary market it's not like Australia it doesn't like the US the UK or other uh, advanced uh, Markets, so it's just on the starting stage. So the starting stages, 
that invested on the market or some big companies are just individual investors. So uh, some of them are lawyers, lawyers are allowed to invest on that. Some of them are from the financial sector, they would like to invest on this new sector. But as the market goes, as the market expands, some professionals or some professional institutional investors, uh, they would like to invest this. But at this time, there's no like public fundraising on that, just a private one. And also, uh, the capital market does not, at this time, focus on this. But certain, I think certain security companies see that and they would like to have a deep understanding of this market. So we see as time grows that if the founders build, really build a perfect investment logic and also some data or some track record to prove that is the, uh, the time for the capital market to investment on this, on this market. And uh, in the final stage, I will see something about the distant resolution. I, I think some of you already know that, or some of you doesn't, about how to pursue the case in China, or even if your father would like to fund the case in China, what you should take care of. Is that because uh, when when funding cases in China, there have like two 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 grants. First, for domestic cases, a case between two Chinese party, or a foreign related cases. So there's a definition for the foreign related cases under the Chinese law. It's a pure translation of that. So some wording doesn't translate uh, very uh, very understandable in, in in English. But actually, uh, this uh, this is a uh, what the Chinese people say about those sort of things. So the court may determine whether it have a foreign related issue, so that makes a foreign related cases, and those are the, probably the standards for that. And, but in, in recent years, there's a precedent always comes through as long as there's a movie, foreign, holy, uh, sorry, wholly foreign or entities, whether it is a party in, in, of a Chinese party or it is a foreign party that a dispute includes a Wufi or include between Wufis will be considered as foreign related. So that gives the possibility of those claims to be submitted to international arbitration or foreign arbitration uh, by uh, some sort of feedback from the Supreme Court. Uh, there is a case called Simmons uh, International Trade versus Shanghai Golden Landmark it's an arbitration case decided by the probably the uh, the ICC or uh, the ICC uh, International Chamber of, Chamber of Commerce uh, uh, International Court of Arbitration that uh, because it is need to be in, uh, uh, enforced in China. So the first intermediary people's court in Shanghai decided that uh, the. Because it's a dispute, the Simmons is a Wufi in Shanghai, and this is a domestic companies. Because uh, the, the courts will held that it has the foreign related issues, because that Simmons first is a Wufi and uh, FTZ free trade zone, and also uh, because Shanghai Golden Landmark uh, just uh, did some estoppel or good faith. Uh, or, or good faith concerns in the arbitration. First, a participant in the arbitration proceedings, and then in the in the in the in the, in the enforcement stages, it said it doesn't think that this this case can be uh, submitted to a foreign arbitration. So, on that basis, that the court decided it has foreign related uh, uh, issues, so it can be. Uh, Submitted to um, foreign arbitration, and then it can be enforced under the New York Convention. And also, uh, after that, there's some opinions saying that uh, the Wufis in FTZ between a uh, uh, dispute between Wufis in FTZ, it is foreign related. But for one Wufi and a PRC entity, domestic entity, that they would just use the estoppel. Uh, as normal, it's something like that. It's normal, good face to just like the case of the Siemens case. And for the old system, that uh, the first instance, second instance, true trial, there are three stages in Chinese courts. First instance uh, is 
in the uh, normally it's in the domestic courts. But recently, there's a, another interpretation from the Supreme Court saying that uh, the cases that is below five billion RMB, uh, because we, uh, in, in, in the old system, that there might be some cases which reach a certain amount, as I see probably a 100 million that comes to the high court in the first instance. But at this time, that the SPC did a very higher amount to 5 billion RMB that if only if a case that reaches 5 million billion RMB that comes to the, the high court, high people's court and for about those, those, uh, this amount that goes just to go to the first instance as the intermediary court for the for related cases and also there's the high court for the second instance and there's a also a retrial system. So the retrial system comes, it can come after the second instance, probably the appealing stages, or if you find new evidence or something that uh, you, you don't have in advance, you can also submit for the retrial, but that is also happens in uh, limited times. And also there's recently there's some innovation in this whole system that China started with the international commercial courts in Shenzhen and Xi'an for the disputes or international commercial disputes. I think a lot, uh, yesterday it has its first case to be here. Uh, one, one party is the Red Bull, uh, and, uh, uh, maybe the third party is the Red Bull, and the, there are the two parties, uh, domestic parties, uh, to, to have some uh, share uh, dispute, equity disputes on the movies of the Red Bull and also the International Commercial Court would also do some preservation of assets to support the arbitration status and also for some mediation services. And when, you, when we see about domestic arbitration, we see the Beijing Arbitration, uh, there are some well-known arbitration institutions, the Beijing Arbitration Commission, uh, the China International Economic and Trade Arbitration Commission, the CTAC, often known as the Shanghai International Arbitration Center, and the Shenzhen Court of International Arbitration. And uh, when you have the kind of these institutions that they are well known and they are high quality and they are high efficiency. And one thing to take in mind is that the interim address in China is from courts for arbitration proceedings is from courts not the arbitration tribunal. And also, the arbitration fees are all prepaid pre uh, rather than the hourly rate or that. But you can also choose hourly rate as, as long as uh, it's the foreign related cases which apply to the foreign related or international arbitration rules for those arbitration institutions. And that can be, account, uh, can be done in an hourly rate basis. And also for the other fees, arbitrator fees, then normally it would be paid in advance for a domestic arbitration. And also it is quite efficient, uh, some, because there are just some procedures that is just as simple as domestic litigation. Uh, probably when you see a case like half a year, and some of them are even faster, three months, or some very simple issues, loan disputes that can come in one month. So that is also possible uh, to be efficient. Uh, enforcement of foreign wars, New York Convention, and uh, receptful uh, enforcement, and also mutual recognition from, for, for disputes around maybe China and Macau, uh, mainland China, Macau, and uh, Hong Kong SCR, or other, other jurisdictions. And uh, there's an internal reporting system which avoids the uh, the control or some sort of influence, some local protection that gives the uh, the final say of whether a arbitration award for an arbitration award shall be rejected or shall be enforced to the Supreme Court, Supreme People's Court. Which means that if uh, if maybe an intermediary court you are applying for the enforce recognition enforcement of arbitration awards, then if that court say yes, it can be enforced, then it doesn't go 
go to the uh, higher higher courts. But if that no, it cannot be enforced. If it reject for the re uh, enforcement, uh, it cannot be enforced. Then and finally it goes to the Supreme Court's court, and that is some sort of uh, reporting system, internal reporting system. But in other ways, it's extend the time of the supervision of the award. So uh, basically, it's a good thing, but in practically, it takes too long for the courts to uh, to re internal report that, and it's no clear timeline or even the time limits for such proceedings in China. And for for um, a party or for a, a lawyer or a, for, for a counsel that might have a client in China, I think some advice is first is to do the risk prevention uh, to better uh, prevent those risks from happening. I think that's the, the, the one thing that we should recommend to our clients. But I don't think that is founder's perspective. Founder would like to have a case to be founded to founders would like more disputes arising so they can fund. But actually, if the risk provision are done well, so probably after there's a case to be found, then it is much more easier, it's much more efficient, and can be enforced in a final stage. So that makes a, a, a founder to, 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 to be more satisfied with the risk prevention, and also uh, to find the asset before, maybe before, even before the disputes that arises, and also choose the effective dispute resolution mechanism, probably arbitration, but to choose those with higher reputation arbitration institutions in China or foreign uh, arbitration institutions. And also uh, find the right one to help your proceedings in China, uh, not the one who uh, charge a more, uh, most expensive bills, the, the council who charge the most expensive bills, but someone who are practice experience, have enough practice experience in this area. When I say area, it, only, it not only means the, the, the industry or, or certain kind of uh, the, 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 visuals, the disputes where the dispute belongs to, but also means that a uh, geographical uh, 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 areas, which means that if you have a dispute and probably in Beijing, you might need to find a Beijing lawyer who is, uh, has his own practice in Beijing. Or if you want to find someone who is in the Northeast, probably you'll find someone who has a, experience, uh, a long experience there and who can do a professional dealing work, uh, who does not only rely on his resources, but also uh, he can make a very good strategy of your case and also do their job properly. And I think that's all of it. If you do have some questions, just feel free to ask me and we can, I'm willing to discuss with you on uh, China related uh, linear finance or China related dispute resolution. Thank you. Thank you. I'm sure you guys got a couple of questions. I would just stand here. Yeah. Right. Maybe you repeat the question because yeah. they're not going to hear them. I'm, uh, I'm sorry, what was the question? What is the level <laughs> of arbitration in China's, China's uh, disputes? Uh, you mean level? Uh, you yeah, mean. Actually, I have some fingers for, I think, for uh, in the year 2018, last, which means last year, uh, that the court case, the case is coming to a court is uh, like. Uh, uh, 20 million cases, but for arbitration cases, it only reaches about uh, uh, um, five. Uh, sorry, 0 0.5 million, which means yeah, five five hundred thousand. So it's a very clear distinction. But I think for some large cases, mainly the commercial, uh, lar large commercial, which has a big amount that they choose arbitration because when we uh, when we observe the, the, the figures of the, 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 the amount of claim between uh, court cases, the sum of the court cases and sum of arbitration cases, that doesn't have that kind of much differences. So it is quite near. So basically for individual cases, arbitration has a higher amount. Yeah. Sorry, I didn't also 
just a brief indication of the uh, studies that a lawyer has to go through in China before they are admitted uh, to uh, as lawyers. So mm -hmm. the question was admit uh, admission of a lawyer. a lawyer become a lawyer? Yeah, that was, uh, yeah. How does a lawyer become a lawyer? Uh, uh, basically, firstly, because there's a certain law says that uh, uh, one who wants to become a lawyer must be a Chinese national. So that basically means that you, you need to born there or you get a Chinese nationality. And uh, that is basically uh, someone who born from the mainland China and also from Hong Kong, Macau and Taiwan. And But for those three areas that you can practice in mainland China, but there are certain kind of uh, limitations. And I think uh, years before that those those lawyers, they can only deal with some uh, uh, family-based cases or commercial basis cases, they cannot do uh, uh, criminal cases. And for a uh, normal track for a, Chinese, uh, uh, for a Chinese lawyer to become a licensed lawyer, uh, you need to go to a law school and uh, mainly the law school that is uh, whether it's a bachelor degree of uh, law or it's a master degree of law that is okay and then you uh, you, uh, you you uh, you you pass the, the uh, chinese uh, bar exam so that gives you qualification to be a lawyer but that's just the qualification after you get this qualification after you join law firm then you take it takes about uh, one year for an internship in that law firm, but that internship is after you uh, graduate from your universities that is based on your work. So after one year of intern work there, uh, you can apply for the license of uh, lawyers. And uh, that's only based on that you work for a law firm. So which means that as long as you work for a law firm and you got a license, you could be lawyers. But as long as you leave that law firm, that that is not, but there's also some, uh, I think there, there are recently some regulations or some guidelines, policies for in-house counsels to apply, to apply certain kind of license for corporate lawyers. Uh, most of them are in the state-owned enterprises and uh, I think that's what, what makes them to be lawyers. And for foreign lawyers, that China does not have a foreign lawyer system. Uh, for some uh, law firms that probably has a representative office in, in China, probably uh, like Baker McKenzie, uh, that in this rep office, it only can call themselves like a legal consultant, which means that it can only, it cannot say something about the Chinese law, or it cannot give opinions on Chinese law, but it can only give opinion on the environment of Chinese law. It's a, kind of a distinction between that. So for them, they can, but recently there's some certain joint venture, like Baker McKenzie, they joint ventured with a local firm called Fengxun. So in this firm, that if you have some Chinese nationals that would, has a license in previous law firms, that it would, uh, itself would like to do some uh, like court proceedings, to print it in court proceedings as lawyers, as licensed lawyers, you can, uh, you can be hired by the joint venture, the Chinese party joint venture, then you can uh, do the proceedings, enter the name both uh, by the Baker McKenzie and also finishing the joint venture. So you can have your clients maybe uh, in foreign, in, in the US or in Australia and have your uh, Chinese lawyers to pursue them in Chinese courts by, by this kind of GV. So I have a question here. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. My question. This is the first time I've ever heard of online dispute resolution. Yeah. Anyone, any of you guys ever heard of it before? Because I'm, I'm here for the first time. All right. Yeah. So online dispute resolution, and, and is it also online arbitration? Yeah. And if so, what happens? What's this thing like? Because this is supposed to be a room of people, so go ahead. Yeah, because I think for the traditional wheel, especially for arbitration and also for courts, it is uh, decided by people whether it's a judge or whether it's an arbitrator. But I think for online uh, dispute resolution, uh, it comes uh, with the, the, like the development of uh, arbitration or, or even court proceedings, uh, mainly because uh, people, they, they have too many issues. It's also the emergence of the e-commerce. 
So when you have some disputes with the, because in e-commerce is very like popular and very developed in China. So if you have some disputes with the, maybe with the seller, but that amount doesn't give you the, maybe the, the, the motivation to pursue that in a court. Probably when you buy a, probably when you buy a glass, probably in China that's 100 RMB, which you cost probably uh, 15 US dollars. Uh, or 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 20, 20, 20 Australian dollars. Uh, that doesn't give you the motivation to 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 approach another court and say, okay, I want this to be uh, I want this to be compensated if there's a, like a, a low quality uh, as items. So uh, on that on that circumstance, there's a kind of a dispute resolution system in online. So the there are. Court, there are there are judges, but the judges appear only by a video, probably the online platform, and uh, mainly some uh, customer just uh, submits some evidence, maybe this and also the the delivery sheets of that, some uh, invoices. Then the judgment can make the decision and uh, just uh, uh, give the money to back to the customer. And also for the online arbitration, I think most of them are. Uh, developed recent recent years as the uh, uh, financial reform, financing form in China. Recent years, we have some online platform for the lending, the peer-to-peer -peer lending, and that arises many disputes that the court itself cannot uh, cannot tolerate because the court they have limited judges. So uh, I, I think one figure can can see that because for. Uh, uh, maybe a district court in China, very uh, you know, you know, very like developed places in Beijing, Shanghai, or Shenzhen. Uh, for each judges, for each judge, it has uh, more than uh, three hundred or four hundred cases each year, which means that uh, every day he has to hear a case and conclude a case each every every day, uh, not including his time for the rest. So the, on that circumstances, that arbitration would like to deal with this, but it doesn't have enough arbitrators, and it's not even worthy to to have those arbitrators to to hear it. Uh, on the and also uh, the the case is very simple because it's just a lending, and, and there's a transfer of money. There's a very standard contracts, so it would. Uh, it, the, the, the arbitration institutions would firstly have all the evidence, including contracts signed online or by an electro electric way, electronic way, and then to have those evidence in a in a in a in a in a, in a drive in a uh, probably cloud drive, and then if there's a dispute, then it pull the, the the evidence from the cloud drive and then. Uh, for the arbitrator, or even some very simple questions for the uh, for 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 the for the AI to make the preliminary judgment or a decision or, or award, and then there's the arbitrator or a judge to 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 make some correction if there is a correction. But if there's no, then the 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 judges will make the judgment or the arbitrator will make the award, and then the award will go to enforcement to the courts. And then I think that is uh, the, 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 the normal proceeding for the online digital revolution. Thank you for that answer. That was very thorough. Yeah. Um, you make it, all right. So now I understand it. You guys understand it too. It's like as if you order something through eBay or Amazon, mm -hmm. and you have a problem with it. Yeah. But in these cases, these corporations have their own sure. quote unquote court, well, but it's not a court. It's it's the company decides independently whether it be Alibaba. I'm sure Alibaba has the mm -hmm. same. Yeah. But I'm trying to understand. Okay, I understand these are smaller value cases with a lot of volume. Where would this be? Um, it's not like Taobao. It's not like you're going to go to Taobao and have a problem with something you ordered there and take it to court. I mean, mm -hmm. there's a big difference between just going to the company that you've done business with online or something and say, hey, I got a problem, resolve this, mm -hmm. but going to court. Mm -hmm. And then I, I want to understand, like, give me. Give me some idea on how this, this ends up in, in the public courthouse. I mean, even though it's online, how, how, does, this, how does this happen? Uh, actually, because I, I have attended with like uh, some hearings in the Hangzhou uh, online court and uh, Hangzhou or say Hangzhou Internet Court, and it's just uh, basically um, no like no 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 uh, 
no documentary evidence, which means that probably because all the like the purchase record or other, if you if there's a dispute of uh, like uh, uh, some finance uh, disputes between the, the online, so there's the online uh, uh, of of your uh, your online trade uh, details that are stored in the in in the drives. So so basically, you don't need to pre present any uh, do, any document evidence. So that and, and also that is also even if you want to submit something that is also through the uh, you submit to an online platform. So that can be uh, gathered by the court, and then the court would uh, have some time uh, decide when to to be the hearing. And if there is a hearing, so um, I think two parties was. Uh, was standing or sitting, or their 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 representative, like lawyers, standing uh, uh, near a computer, and then see about the cameras, and those those two parties would see uh, whether there's a time allocation there for one party to to speak something and to provide evidence and to maybe to do some like. Uh, uh, it's uh, regular court trial. It's just virtual. It's online. Yeah, yeah. Okay. It's just the issue is. Like in other words, like all right. So I, I, where, where would this take place? Like, what? Give me some examples. Like, I'm buying something from Taobao because mm -hmm. if I have a problem with Taobao, yeah. I go to Taobao. I yeah. don't have to go to the courts. Yeah. If I have a problem with Alibaba, I go to Alibaba. I don't go to the courts. Yeah, actually, is that because we you have a, like a, a dispute with the maybe the seller in the Taobao because Taobao is a platform. So basically, you have a have a dispute with the seller. The, then, then it is uh, like to be to be decided by Taobao. Taobao itself has certain things, but if uh, that is, but that is not the final, the binding decision, because it's just the internal system. So if whether the buyer or the seller they are not satisfied with this kind of uh, decisions by the internal mechanism, so it has the rights to to go to the courts, and then the courts will have the final say. Of such that, like disputes, and that you would then go to an online dispute resolution. Sure, because uh, most of the of the record are stored in online, so it is much more easier to to present at you know online platform rather than uh, the, the, the the traditional proceedings that you can you you either need to gather this information from Taobao and then pro provide that to the to the courts. So it is more automatically transferred from Taobao to the court to the international uh, sorry internet court. In Hangzhou. And in terms of, uh, you have one slide on money collection. Yeah. You have any comments on that? Because that's with your business. That's, it. that's all that matters, right? In terms of, so, if, uh -huh. if an award, if in other words, the judgment is decided in China. Yeah. Yeah. You're wrong. Right. You owe us. Like, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm sure to award out of Hong Kong. Yeah. Enforcement in China. Yeah. So enforcement yeah. because it's kind of a, a gray area, right? Mm-hmm. So you mean you mean uh, the proceeding for that enforcement? Or? Well, let's say let's say there's let's say there's an, a, a judgment a yeah. judgment that says you owe me two million RMB. Yeah. Okay. Now the enforcement comes in. Because yeah. Because that's what matters. Otherwise, otherwise, sure. uh, litigation funding is no power. Yeah. Right. So if there's no if there's no ability to enforce, then LF has no power. So mm -hmm. what what resources do litigation partners have or, or, or attorneys have in China for enforcement? Ah, you mean the okay? Because uh, I think for China, firstly, uh, for maybe a Hong Kong arbitration award, yeah, probably you you need to enforce that. And when you come to enforce, the, the court will see okay whether there's a procedural issues under the uh, the, the bilateral agreement between. It's much more similar than the New York Convention. So if that is okay, it is try to recognize and enforce. So the enforcement goes to. Another court, maybe, maybe some of them district court, some of them are uh, enforcement bureaus. And for the enforcement bureaus, it has a system. In China, it's very, uh, it's very, it, it is very. I think it's a very, very good system to 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 help you to track all the maybe the bank accounts, maybe the the real estates because they are all connected to okay. online. So it is much more easier when you submit those maybe the, the another party. Uh, the name and probably its uh, like locations, and you can also give some uh, 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 sources, some uh, sources to 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 the courts. Maybe uh, it is uh, like investigated by your by your lawyers or by other like agencies to to do that. 
But you can also just apply to the court, say another party is, now I have a ward, it's recognized and enforced by the courts, and the court will help you to do the, the trace and also the, the investigation of the assets under this, this person. And then the seizure of those assets? Yeah, you can also see there, uh, if you find something uh, uh, in, a, in a preliminary, you can apply for the courts to, to freeze that or to make some uh, like uh, securities. Uh, but but you but on, on the on the on another way you need to provide some securities uh, to freeze that. Sorry. Uh, you you need to provide securities. Security. Yeah, how, how I'm not that? Yeah. Sorry. Yes, sorry. Yeah yeah yeah. So, so so basically that's that's the normal proceedings. Yeah. Okay. Everyone, please thank me. <laughs>